Good morning, welcome to Furry and Spoil. Today I'm going to talk to you about treating a hot spot. Now I've done videos about prevention. This is about if you've actually got a hot spot right now, how to actually deal with that actual hot spot. So I've done longer, a longer video and I've gone through prevention, I've gone through my story and everything. If you haven't watched it and hot spots is something you're dealing with, go and watch it really because unfortunately I really know what I'm talking about with hot spots. So this is about, you've actually got a hot spot right now. So this is little Albert, here's the one. Excuse his dirty face and feet, he, we went on a very muddy walk and being a Bichon, he just gets very mucky, stained look in the autumn. Um, what you need to do is, if you don't know what a hot spot looks like, Google, Google it and you'll see pictures of it. I'm not going to put a picture up here because I don't want, it's quite awful and just in case it would upset people. So um, just Google, if you want to see what a hotspot looks like, you don't know, Google image of hotspot. Okay, so right now your dog's got a hotspot. So the first thing you've got to do is you've got to get that clean. So here's just a selection of things that I used when I had bad hotspots. Not me, my dog. Um, you've got to get it clean. And the thing that we used was called Hibby Scrub. H-I-B-I -I scrub. I can't show you any because I haven't got any because I haven't we haven't had hot spots for like years because I put all of this stuff into place and there are no hot spots. You get it on and um, we just go on Amazon, somewhere like that. Just go onto Amazon and get it. It's really, really easy to get. And you just put it in the sink, just like bubble bath really, just pop your dog in the sink um, and just bathe them with it. Now, if your dog is bigger and can't go in the sink, then just wet some tissue or a flannel with it and just bathe them with it. And that just cleans it all out. And it's the stuff that they use in hospitals um, when they're cleaning their hands to do surgery. And so it really, really cleans it up. And then you need to, sorry, this video is not going to be interesting to look at, but this is factual. Um, you need to um, dry the hotspot before you do anything else. And you just do that by just waiting so if your dog is small enough, just carry your dog around and get that hot spot dry. So when um, we had our work with hot spots, we used to carry him around to look out the windows, go outside in the garden, get some air to it, um, and just let, and it would dry and, and dry up. If your dog is really big, just distract them with something or rather make a fuss of them or whatever. But just get that, you want it to be dry. Then here comes the thing, you need to be doing creams. Now, we have, we tried everything. So I'm not going to repeat my story because it's on the long... I'll put the long video in at the end of this video. It's on the long video, but we were in a really bad way when we first got Albert. And we tried everything. I'm chamomile tea bags, um, manuka honey, the lot. Nothing worked. Nothing. It just got worse and worse. Nothing worked um, until the vet said, I think we're going to have to put him down because he was covered in them. It was awful. Um... This worked. This stuff worked. Now, I'm not sponsored, nothing like that. It's just, this is the stuff that I always use. Now, so I use um, Johnson's Tea Tree Cream and have been doing for the last 10 years and I can't see myself ever changing. Now and again, I will try a different cream. So because I put everything I do in place, we haven't had a hotspot for 10 years. But sometimes they might get a gnat bite. Um, that happens quite a lot in the summer. They get bitten by gnats and stuff. And so we do have to deal with itchy situations. And this stuff is still absolutely fabulous for it. And so if I just hold it here, you can see... This is just Johnson's Tea Tree Skin Cream. Now, I'm not saying, I mean, just because I use Johnson's, I'm not saying that's the one to use. But I am saying it's the tea tree. Now, don't use neat tea tree oil on them. Don't do that. Um, I've looked into it and it's not a great thing to do. You need to have it in a, in a cream form. I had a look on the internet and you can get other creams that are tea tree creams. They're not that, that easy to get hold of. But... Um, this Johnson's one is, I've always got a big old stash of this and it's easy to get. Um, but in different countries, you might be able to get tea tree cream easier. But do make sure it's one for dogs, a dog tea tree cream. Now, the reason I love this Johnson's one so much is because it comes in this handy spray. And in a minute, I'm going to tell you a particular point at which I find this so useful. Um, but it's also really useful if you've got a dog that doesn't like being handled. You wouldn't have to touch the dog. You could spray the hot spot with that um, and that would do great. But honestly, this stuff, 
Please believe me when I tell you, you wouldn't believe the concoctions I tried. I tried bathing him in turmeric. I tried, at one point, he was bright yellow because I was bathing him. Honestly, you just wouldn't believe the things I was trying. Um, and this absolutely is brilliant. So once you've got the skin dry, I put the cream on. And you, you can't exactly rub it in because it hurts. It's a wound. Um, so you but put the cream in the best you can. If you can't touch the hotspot because it's too bad, then you need to be putting the spray on it because you don't have to touch it. You could just spray that on. And again, carry the dog around, distract the dog so that um, that can all dry in um, and, that, that, and you know, make sure it goes in. Sometimes it looks like um, it won't be going in because there's just all this cream and nothing's happening, but it does surprisingly go in quite quickly. So carry them around afterwards so they don't just lick that straight back off. Right, so next I'm going to demonstrate something that I do. And so this was something that I always did with hotspots when we were getting over them. Um, and then it's something that I still do to this day if the boys get nap bites or anything like that. So you do not want the dog scratching the hotspot ever because you just don't. Because it's incredible how quickly they will rip that thing open, even though it must hurt so much to do it. It's incredible how quickly they will just rip that thing open and you will be in a real mess. So you never want them to be scratching it themselves. And that is your job. So what I always do is, so let's assume this pink post-it note is the hotspot. This is something, again, I've been doing this for 10 years and it's brilliant. You are going to scratch around the outside of it. So I don't know if you've ever had a nap bite and you're trying not to scratch it because that's what I tell you never to do. Um, but you scratch around the outside of it and it sort of eases it and helps. So it's the same theory as that. And trust me, this really, really works. And Albert was getting, even the boys, you know, like they, they're always getting bitten like by gnats and stuff in the summer. And um, they know if they go, if they scratch it, I'll come towards them with my kitchen towel and I will do it for them and they like it. So you just, like, so supposing that's your hot spot, you just get your kitchen towel. So just a piece of kitchen towel folded into four. Now tissue does work, but I find it's just, it's not as thick and it's not as successful but it will work if that's all you've got but kitchen towel is the best to get so just a piece of kitchen towel and then you just do that around the outside of it so don't touch the hot spot just be scratching around the outside like that and they love it so just around the outside like that now it's really important that um you don't let the dogs scratch it at all it's really important that i can't emphasize that enough they'll do so much damage to it um now vets and people like that will tell you to put a cone on the dog at this point i don't agree with that at all because the dog will find if you put the cone on it that means you're not watching the dog and if you're not watching the dog the dog will find another way to rip that hot spot open they are so unbearably itchy for them and it will drag itself on the carpet or uh, it will just it will find something a wall anything to scratch it and that will be awful because not only will they open it all up and it'll be a mess but you're going to get bacteria in there it's just a really bad thing to do so um don't ever let that happen so um no cones because you are going to keep an eye on your dog and um, don't let them scratch it. And, and the other thing with the kitchen towel is, so when we ever have a nap bite on one of the dogs or something like that, or when we had hot spots, I always carry kitchen towel around with me all the time a piece, and everybody in the house does. And everybody knows if you see the dog scratching whatever it is he's got, you quickly jump into action and you scratch it all around the outside for him. As soon as my husband walks in the door, hand him a piece of this, and he knows if he sees you know, whoever's scratching all around the outside. And like I said, that is for hot spots, but also works great for gnat bites or anything that's itchy and they shouldn't be scratching themselves. Right, so we're going to watch my Harry here while I just go through some more things with you. He's never had hot spots because he was fortunate enough to have come after Albert, by which time I'd put everything in place to make sure, <laughs> charming, to make sure that um he didn't get hot spots. So um, let me just go through some more points with you. Never cover the hot spot up with a bandage or anything. Never, ever do that. That is really bad because it's a bacterial thing. You need to get air to it and get it dried out because hot spots are very wet. And that just lets the bacteria grow. So you need to let air always get to them. So never cover them up and keep the fur as short as you can around the hot spots. So if, you don't, if you've got a, hair, a, a dog that's 
bit longer on the hair just scissors or whatever just see if you can get the fur as short as you can around the hot spot um or your groom or whatever but the shorter you can keep the fur around the hot spot the better it will be now i know this is easy for me to say this next bit but it's really important don't ever leave your dog alone if he's got hot spots because like i just said they will just tear him open they will even though it must hurt like anything sorry you just got the back of him but you know <laughs> um, they will just tear it open so don't ever leave your dog on your own the thing is if you've got a hot spot and if you're treating it right correctly this it shouldn't actually last that long so while it might be a bit inconvenient maybe but i just don't i mean i'm lucky because i just well, i have a, a lifestyle where my dogs are always with me and so that was never a problem um but don't leave really really try i i, I wouldn't even try just please don't leave your dog on your own if, if you've got hot spots find someone to look after him or something because if he opens that hot spot up you you're in big trouble so um don't leave them on their own um you've got to treat it really the same i mean it's a horrible you know he's they're really ill and you've got to you've got to treat it like i said if you do everything and i've done uh, this great big long video i did and it was talking about it wasn't none of this is you can't just do this and not do anything else because the hot spots are going to keep on coming they're going to keep on coming you've got to change everything it's a complete lifestyle change and in the, this long video i'm talking about i've gone through everything food it everything everything has to be changed because if you just chain do what i tell you to do in this video you might even get rid of the hot spot but it will be back if you're feeding the wrong foods and all that kind of thing you have to change lots of things and so i've gone through all of that in this other video which i'll put up at the end of the um of this video the other thing is that it happens at night time so uh you know this all carries on through the night so you can't leave the dog through the night either and i when halbert was going through his really bad time i i was up every two hours with him in the night it was it was it was bad really really bad but i had to because i had to keep getting the cream onto that hot spot making sure it was clean um and luck i mean i was quite lucky that he was sleeping in the bed with me which made it so much easier because i could just you know he was there if he went to scratch it in the night i and i could i could feel that he was scratching it and i could wake straight up and sort it out but you have to keep this going all through the night it's absolutely exhausting it, it's absolutely exhausting for you and for them it's awful which is why I never understand why people don't make the changes to prevent them from coming because it's awful for you as well as the dog. So it makes more sense just to put the measures into place so that they don't keep getting hot spots all the time. Okay, I want to talk to you about a thing called darting. So it's not actually the technical term, it's just what I've named it over the years. When a dog the hot spot hasn't actually appeared yet so you can't visibly see the hot spot but the hot spot is under the skin brewing so it's in his system they do a thing which i call darting and they literally that they just suddenly jump up and dart across the room and then dart over the room and dart across the room and it's just very they, it's like someone imagine if somebody just jabbed them in the leg with something sharp they jump up and run that's what they do and it's i call it darting and along with that, also um, at that time, I found that Albert also got um, his he would have his poos would be runny at the same time. And as soon as he started that darting, I knew a hot spot was coming. But you can't see where the hot spot is because nothing's come up on the skin. So what I did during that time was um, watched him, and he would because there was no hot spot coming up, he couldn't go at one place. But he would go around the general area. And that is where the spray, the tea tree spray came in so handy because there wasn't a particular place for me to put cream on, but there was a place for me, an area for me to spray with the with the spray. Because the cream, if you put the cream, supposing it was somewhere around their back legs, you couldn't put cream all over there. It would be such a mess and that just really wouldn't work. But with the spray, you can spray a big area. It soaks in quickly again, carry them around so that the area dries. Um, and so, sometimes I would find, do it definitely, hello darling, definitely towards the end when we were really getting the hang of it and towards the end of um, getting rid of his hot spots, I would find that if that happened, the darty and the spray would be enough to just stop the hot spot coming up. But that was definitely alongside 
coconut oil, salmon oil, changing the food, make sure there's no grain, all of that kind of stuff, which I go into in the other video. Um, but it's really, really important that you do everything as, as a whole thing. Um, and don't underestimate how awful this is. If you don't get on top of it, it's just so awful for the dog. So awful. And it's just really worth getting on top of it because it's a horrible, horrible thing. And the thing is that when you... <laughs> hello, sweetheart. When you do get on top of it and you change their diet and you do all the other stuff that I've said in the other video... Um, you just don't have hotspots anymore. They just go. And so for Albert to have gone, so when he, he came to us covered in hotspots. He must have had 10 hotspots on him. And I was up all through the night with him um, and all, all day dealing with it. The vets were giving him steroids and it, everything. And none of that works. Don't go down the steroid route. It, route, it doesn't work. Don't go down it. Um, but that's how bad he was. And then everything was put into place. I researched it all, put everything into place. And he hasn't had, so he's nine and a half now. And he hasn't, so that's maybe the first six months of his life. Maybe not even six months, but the first bit of his life. And then um, the nine years since we haven't had it, not a single hotspot, nothing. If he gets bitten by like a bug or a gnat out in the garden or when we're out on our walks or whatever, um, it probably overreacts more than it does in other dogs. But I put that down to the fact that he's got some Bichon in him. Um, but then again, I just get the sprays out. I do the thing with the kitchen towel um, and I'm able to keep that completely under control. But we have not had a single hot spot since I put everything into place. So I'll leave that video at the end. It will pop up in a minute. And um, I really recommend that you watch it because it just please do. So, um, as always, if you've got any questions at all, pop them into comments. I'm on Instagram and I'm on Twitter. As I record this, I'm not very active on Instagram, but I intend to change that in the new year. Um, but I'm really very active on Twitter and that's where I'm having my conversations with you. And um, I love hearing about your dogs. Um, so please talk to me about your hot pot, about, about your hotspot situation. Um, or if you've just got any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me. I will help you. Um, so that's it. So thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.